All right, welcome everyone. This is the first video in a series where I am prepping for my upcoming technical interviews by teaching them uh, to you all. Um, this kind of blew up, which I think is really fun. Um, and that being said, I do want to address some very common thoughts around the technical interview before I dive in. Um, and the structure of this is gonna be, uh, this is gonna be a, a mild introduction to um, technical interviewing in general. Then I'm gonna go into one of the lightest chapters there are in this book, Cracking the Coding Interview, which looks like this, if you haven't gotten it, it's by Gail McDowell. It's a staple in just about every developer's um, library. Um, one thing I'm gonna talk about is uh, why technical interviewing exists and why it's not such a bad thing, even though it's trivial and annoying. Uh, and then I'm going to dive into uh, the first chapter, arrays and strings. Um, and once I teach a little bit about the arrays and strings chapter, uh, then I'm going to dive into about three or four interview questions uh, until I get exhausted, and then I'm going to stop. Um, so that's kind of how that'll go down. Now, just up front, this is going to be all done in JavaScript. The book is done in Java. It has the answers in the back of the book. They are written in Java. It's a little different. Uh, and there are a few things to be aware of. One is polymorphism, where you can have the same function name, but since you changed the arguments, uh, the function signature, rather, uh, then you can have uh, this polymorphic function, and it's totally fine. Uh, that pops up in every now and then in the answers. Uh, but I don't think that happens during um, a lot of the first chapters, so no worries there. So, okay, I'm going to put a timer on for five minutes and spiel about technical interviews for a second because the whole world is either in an uproar about them or hates them or like, why is it, why am I doing this? Uh, and I just want to say that um, it, it is definitely tough. It is the toughest thing I think I've had to learn as a developer. I'm self-taught personally. Uh, and this stuff was a nightmare. When I first went to San Francisco to get my first job, I thought, you know, I know coding. I'll just sneak right on in there. And then they started asking me these types of questions. And I was totally lost until I found cracking the coding interview. And then I was still lost. <laughs> um, but after enough hours being spent on this, uh, I eventually came around to an algorithmic thinking uh, approach to doing these. Um, and uh, it just gets better and better over the years. Now, algorithmic thinking is something that uh, is truly a superpower in the developer world. Uh, it's a very difficult style of thinking, and it's not used quite as much because we normally do in the web dev world what we call crud work, uh, or you know, we're just hooking APIs up to the front end and displaying data. You might think, you know, when will I ever use trees, right? <laughs> Where does recursion happen? Where does Array, you know, we're, we're about to do hash maps and arrays and strings. Like I'm never going to get a palindrome of a permutation in the real world. Why are we doing it during an interview? Uh, and the thing is like, yeah, maybe it's kind of weird. Uh, maybe it's a little cargo culty following Google and their footsteps. Everybody wants to do that. Uh, but algorithmic thinking is absolutely uh, one of my favorite things to be able to do as a developer. And you can learn it. You can learn it no matter where you're coming from. Uh, I'm going to show a particular way where it's less about memorizing these specific techniques and more about what do I do when I'm in a unique situation, right? And I like to diagram things. I like to draw them out. I like to think about it, plan over it. And of course, I like to use the data structures and algorithms that we already, uh, that we are going to go over in the coming days. Um, they're very good. They're very useful. And even though you might think, oh, well, I could just Google them. Why are they asking me about binary search? Um, it's good to kind of have the knowledge of what binary search is on hand by implementing it. Um, same thing with merge sort, same thing with your know, breadth first search for graphs um, and all sorts of things. Hash maps, absolutely. Your code is going to get more optimal because you are doing this algorithm stuff. Um, and it's going to be good. Now, a lot of the ways it's taught, though, it's going to seem trivial. And like, when am I ever going to uh, check the permutation? I'm looking at some questions here. Rotate a matrix. When am I going to do any of that stuff? 
Um, and that can be a little strange, but these are nice little warm ups to algorithmic thinking. They're, um, they they kind of help you get into the right mindset for algorithmic thinking. And while they're not practical, you know, <laughs> um, eventually you're going to come across a situation where it's very practical to think this way. Uh, and it's going to be really amazing. I have a few examples of it, but I want to follow up with a story real quick since I only have a minute before my spiel is up. Um, I was once, it, when I was in San Francisco, I had this friend who worked at Uber uh, in its heyday. And um, I was like, okay, so, you know, what is, what is your interview prep like? Uh, and this guy went to Carnegie Mellon University, one of the top computer science schools in America. Uh, it is the like, it is up there with MIT and everyone, if you haven't heard of it. And it is the most intensive program I have ever heard of, it is absolutely insane. Um, and I was like, so what, what is your, you know, you, you brilliant person who went through this and survived, what, what is your, what is your um, take on all this stuff? And he said, what I did is I grabbed Cracking the Coding interview and studied for two hours every weekday for two months. Uh, and that's how I was able to, that's how he was able to pass Google, Uber, Facebook, all that stuff. Two hours a day for two months, um, which is shocking because I was like, didn't you learn all this stuff? Um, but it's, it's still useful to do it this way. Um, it's, there's still a lot in it and you still, you still have to put in the time, uh, even though he's like this brilliant genius kid, you know, the kid, he's my age. Um, and so that's just where I want to set your expectations. You know, you got to study, you got to put in the time. Um, and if you want to follow that super Spartan approach of two hours a day for two months, um, then, you know, you're going to end up with a nice six figure career. Uh, and maybe it'll be at Google. Maybe it won't be, you know? Uh, but you're going to make some good money off of it. That much is for sure. And frankly, it's going to help you in your job, in your day-to-day, -day, or when you want to do a creative personal project. Spiel over. All right. So let's dive into the very first chapter in cracking the coding interview. Uh, this one is on page 88, arrays and strings. Now, I'm obviously not going to hold this up for you, <laughs> this book up for you, or like, scan it or put it on a projector, buy the book. It's, it's super fantastic. We're going to do a brief spiel on uh, hash tables. And here's how I'm going to do this. I am going to uh, share my screen and I'm going to pull up Chrome Dev Tools. So let me do that real quick. Let me get ready here. Pop the console out. No, I can't keep it here. That's good enough. Okay, I will share my screen now. Make sure I don't have anything crazy up. Um, where's the share screen button? There we go, desktop one. And boom, here we are. Uh, let, me, let me move some stuff out of the way. There we go. Hopefully, the, uh, hopefully Zoom's cooperating with that. So check out this pretty picture. Isn't that nice? This is the Unsplash um, extension. Unsplash being a great place for uh, stock photos. I am not advertising them. I just love them. All right, so hash, hash tables, also known as uh, dictionaries in Python or um, in JavaScript, we typically just use objects for them. Uh, hash tables are a way to achieve O of one access to things. Uh, now, <laughs> I'm not going to go over big O notation, so feel free to pause right now and go watch a video on YouTube on big O notation. Um, but basically, this means you can instantly access um, a certain value, but it comes with O of N space cost. Um, that means that N being, you know, the length of whatever, you know, you're representing, it's got to represent all of it. Um, so you trade a little bit of space for a little bit of quick access. And frankly, in the real world, this space is always going to be uh, there, like say you receive uh, a big thing of JSON from the uh, server, well, then that's probably done in a uh, sort of hash map, a big JSON object, which has all the properties of a hash table, um, then, you, uh, then you're dealing with it anyway. So you get that instant access and it's really nice. So what, what does that mean? What does that look like? Well, let's say I have this object A uh, and um, let's say uh, it, the keys can be just about anything. I'll say key A is one, 
B is two. This is my favorite thing to do is just throw letters up there. I have nothing valuable otherwise. One is C. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, so A dot one. Oh, look at that, because it doesn't do numbers. That's interesting. But A at one is C and A dot A is one. Uh, so that's some fun properties of you know a JavaScript uh, object right here. And, and this is basically how you build it up. You know, you just have an object, you just throw keys and values in it. Uh, and that's it, you know? Now, the, the cool stuff comes in when we're actually doing these problems and you need to store something in um, a hash map or one of these hash tables or an object. I call them objects. You can, if you hear the word hashes in the real world, it might be this as well. Hashes also mean other things though, so be careful. Um, but really that's all there is to it. It's, uh, you just build it up and you have instant access to stuff. This is a really straightforward chapter. Now in here in the book, they talk about how to construct a hash table. Basically what it's trying to say is how would you make this uh, possible, right? And we're over here like, well, we just have objects. Yeah, but like in something like C++ um, or Java or even in JavaScript, you can recreate a sort of a hash map implementation uh, based on a few key features. Now, the thing is, I don't really, uh, I have never been asked about those features. Um, so I don't really practice them too much, but you'll see them sort of spread across the world. Like when you're doing a database index, that might be in a binary search tree or a, yeah, some sort of like tree in general. Uh, and that can, that's kind of the similar concept as to here. So you'll see it in the real world. Now, this chapter also goes over uh, arrays and strings. And they do that largely because Java uh, is very uh, particular with that. Um, but for us, you know, we, we get a simple uh, array here. We could push whatever we want to it, right? Uh, a equals uh, dot push a, don't form arrays like this, right? A, a dot push two. Oh, what? I thought a is gonna be an array. Nope, a dot push one, sorry. There, and now it's, yeah, you know, and, and just look up on MDN or javascript.info on more on arrays, they're, they're pretty straightforward. Uh, let's go ahead and dive into some of these questions. Um, now I'm going to tell you the question, but I highly recommend um, pausing right now and actually trying to solve it. Well, not right now, before I do it and then solving it yourself and then coming back to this. Now, if you're watching live, don't worry about it. Just Watch this live and then try to do it later on your own. Um, so let's, let's add a page. What I like to do actually is to recreate the whiteboard experience. And to do that, I am going to share my iPad. So let me, oh boy, I got rid of, my, where's my Zoom? Did Zoom crash? No, I'm still, still recording. Ah, where'd my Zoom go? <laughs> this isn't fair. Oh, I see it now. I see it now. Oh, goodness Christ. I thought I crashed the whole thing. Um, okay. Let's let me share my iPad and we will start diving into this. Um, okay. All right, just got to pull it up. Um, screen mirror, zoom. There we go. All right, we're here on my iPad. This is going to represent our whiteboard. Um, frankly, a lot of the times during interviews, people will uh, now they have coder pad, they do this online stuff. Uh, where you type it out. And um, I like doing it on paper. Frankly, I, I solve a lot of problems on paper before I even touch code. Uh, and I'm going to teach that way because it has some nice features to it. Now, when you're in an interview, you might not get a whiteboard. So have a piece of paper and a pen near you, but also feel free to talk about it out loud to um, your interviewer. Okay, so let's dive into interview questions. We are going to do 1.1 in the book. Um, the question is, implement an algorithm to determine if a string has all unique characters. What if you cannot use additional data structures? Um, so as with any approach, 
to algorithms, uh, you kind of want to start with like, say, a brute force method and then work your way to something more concrete. So here it says, what if you cannot use additional data structures? And I'm like, oh God, um, because my first thought here was, well, let's just use a object, right? We have this object that holds, we're, we're iter let's iterate through a string. So say we have this string and uh, let's do uh, dot for each. And that's gonna give us the character maybe this is this is sort of pseudo code so it might not carry over perfectly and for each character i'm going to have this um map this um object that is um characters right and this is going to be function uh unique cares so the string will come from here, right? So that's this. Okay, so um, we've got character in this for each loop. And what I kind of wanted to do initially was say, um, if not characters car, um, then and there's a better way of doing this. I'll look it up. Uh, if that is not true, then characters care equals care. Short for character. Um, else return false. Uh, oh, actually, this is a uh, this is a for each. So this won't actually. Uh, in JavaScript world, so since for each, you provide a callback, if you return false here, then um, you, you, uh, you just do that for one of the callbacks, right? You don't do it for the entire loop. So I'm actually gonna change this to a real for loop. Let me, let me do that real quick. And we're gonna set up some of that for loop boilerplate that we all love from the, from the good old days. All right, so for let i equals zero, I uh, is less than um, string dot length I plus plus All right okay and so a uh, character now or a car let car that could be a const as well but whatever equals string at I right cool so that's just going to be uh, you know if your string is a b c this is zero one two so the first one is A, then it'll be B, then C, right? Cool. Okay, so now we can do this. So if uh, it's not in the character object, add it to it. Um, otherwise, return false, because if it is in there, that means it's not unique anymore, right? So we wanna get rid of that. Very easy. So that's kind of our for loop. I'm gonna do this so you can see that our for loop to end. Now, if you made it through this whole thing without hitting that return false, you can return true. It's done. Cool. But this isn't what they're asking for. They're asking, what if you can't use, oh, sorry. What if you can't use an additional data structure? And we use an additional data structure, this characters thing. And it gave us this O of N space complexity. And it's saying we don't need to do that. Interesting. Okay. So, um, well, I don't know how to do that off the bat. So let's see if we could figure that out. Uh, let me erase a lot of this. Can't use that. Wish my eraser was bigger. That's okay. At least it works. So we have our string, right? We have unique characters. We can't have we can't have additional data structures. Well, goodness, what are we going to do? Well, okay, there's a hint in the book, and I'd like to take the hint because, frankly, I am not entirely sure. Uh, let me see what 44, number 44. Try a hash table. I just did try a hash table. That was hint 44. <laughs> the hint was go against the hint. Could a bit vector be useful? Oh, good Lord. Uh, 132. The other hint is... 132, 
can you solve it in O of n log n time? What might a solution like that look like? Okay, this one is going off the rails. It wants to use a bit vector. Uh, that's kind of insane. I don't know what to do. So what I'm going to do instead of trying to impress everyone with my knowledge is I'm just going to look up the answer, actually. Uh, we're going to move on to the next one. I just want to see what she was talking about. Um, 192. Oh, oh, I see. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, okay. There's two approaches here that are absolutely bonkers, but really interesting stuff to learn from. So I'm reading in the back of the book. And uh, you're welcome to take a look at the solution. One of them uses um, bit manipulation, which I have never had to do in an interview, and I don't recommend uh, necessarily learning it. Um, the other is uh, she used a Boolean character set and evaluated if it was true or false in that, which I basically is good as a hash map. Um, cool. That's fine. Uh, so I learned something new there. You can use bit vectors to do this. You can also use Booleans if you wanted. I think our hash map implementation was great. And frankly, in an interview, that's probably going to be good enough. I mean, if I'm, it, you know, there is a limit to how crazy these get. I, I've interviewed people before. I never asked them about bit manipulation. Um, cool. So let's do 1.2, check permutation. So this one says, given two strings, write a method to decide if one is a permutation of the other. So we have two strings and this is what I like to do. I'm like, okay, uh, what does a permutation mean? Uh, basically, I think, and you can always ask the interviewer this, which I really recommend. Be like, hey, so is a permutation like just a different arrangement of the same letters? Uh, and they'll be like, yes, that's exactly what we're talking about here. Um, so we have two strings. And let's go string A equals like uh, A, B, C, D. And string B equals D, C, B, A. Uh, write a method to decide if one is a permutation of the other. And I, this is actually D, B, B, A, which is not a permutation of this, is it? Because it's missing the letter C. Um, D, C, B, A, which is what I think I wrote, is a permutation because, well, they have all the same letters. Now, there's another thing here. What if uh, B was actually, what if B was actually uh, five letters long, right? Is this still a permutation with the extra C? No, it's, it's no longer a permutation, right? This is a fun little edge case to think of that gives you a little quick win. It's like, well, if they're not the same length, uh, then they can't be a permutation of one another, right? So that's a nice quick check. Um, the other one is like, okay, well, they have to have all the same letters uh, and basically of all the same counts. Now, if I just created a hash map where it's like, okay, does it have A, true, B, true, so on and so forth. Well, here's the problem. If you compared A and B and you looked at this hash map, you would say that it is a permutation because C would be true. And there are two Cs here while there's one C here. Right. So this is some important edge case detection. Now, what if it was something like this, where there's two A's in A, two C's in B, it would still pass like this and the length check would not save us. So keep these edge cases in mind. Think of where can I go wrong? And you're, you're probably thinking, how do I even do this? Right. But, <laughs> but also try to think about where you could go wrong. Think very detailed with these. Um, okay. So let's dive into how uh, I would approach this. So to me, I think the biggest thing, instead of having like A set to true, what if we had A set to the count, right? So I'm, I'm iterating through A, right? And I see the first letter is A. I'm like, okay, A has one. Then we see B. I'm like, okay, B has one. Then we see C. I'm like, okay, C has one. Then I see D. I'm like, B has one. And then I see A again. And I'm like, oh, okay, A plus plus, you know, A is two now. Uh, and then I'm like, all right, that's very cool. Now let's go compare it to B. B is going to have, um, B can basically, you know, you could create its own hash map, but then you're looking at um, a bigger space complexity. I think one of the cool things is maybe we could just decrement these, right? That's one approach. Uh, or we could just create a hash map and say, screw it. Uh, let's have one where it's like D is, uh, D is one here, then C is one, then B 
is one, then A is one, then C turns into two, right? And then we have this. And then we do sort of a comparison, right? We say, okay, is D, what is the D compared to here? What is the C compared to here? What is B compared to here? What is A compared to here? And uh, you can kind of see how annoying that is, right? You're, you're, we're, so I'm seeing some trade-offs here between the two approaches. One where we just decrement. Uh, and if, you know, we're, while we're decrementing these counts, we find something that doesn't jive well, like we hit uh, a negative one number, or we don't find the key in this map. That's a much quicker indication. So I think I like that approach a little bit better than building up another hash map right over here and then seeing if they line up with the original hash map for A's character set, right? So let's do it with that approach, see what happens. Um, okay, I'm gonna do function check for mutation. It's gonna have strings A and B in it. All right, get some coffee. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, first I wanna build up uh, the hash map, right? Let's say the, uh, let's call it uh, const care count equals just an object. Now you're wondering like, oh, I'm going to edit this object. Why does const work? Look it up. Um, it does work though. Okay, so uh, let's go through A and build up this hash hash map. So uh, let's pretend that A dot for each will work really well right here. Uh, care. Then we're gonna do um, we're gonna do this really neat thing where we build up care count. So if and there's there's a better way of doing this. There's something like object dot has own property that should probably use here, but I'm just going to shorthand this. If not care, uh, care count at care. If it's not in there. If it's not in there. Add it to it. Care count care equals one because there's at least one. Now if it is in there, else care count, this is gonna get annoying, at care needs to equal care count. I should have just made a variable for this. At char uh, plus one, right? That's just gonna build up care count for us. And we're gonna close out the loop there, All right? We actually give it a parenthesis because this is a callback, right? For each. Um, okay. so. There, we've built up care count. Now we need to go through B and say, well, uh, we decrement care count. And can we do that properly? Uh, if we can't, then they aren't a permutation of each other. So let's, let's do that with a uh, original for loop so we can, uh, we can get out early there if we find out. So let I equal zero, I is less than uh, B dot length. I plus plus. You know what this just reminded me of? If they're not the same length, let's get out early. Let's get out early. I'm gonna go back up here, maybe uh, insert some code right here. If you're in a text editor, this would be easier to do. I don't have one, so I'm just gonna use this arrow. If a dot length is not equal b dot length, uh, return false. Return false. Uh, boom. Cool. Nice. Almost forgot about that. Don't forget about that. <laughs> okay. So uh, now we're iterating through B. And what we're going to do, I'm running out of space here just a little. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to be mindful of that. Um, so character const okay. equals, um, equals B at I. Cool. Nice. Look at this name. This name is so much better. Can you imagine if you did B at I through the rest of this loop? They would totally dock you for code style. So be good with naming. That's a, that's a really good lesson here. Um, okay. So that's the character. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say um, if 
Uh, what do we want to do? Well, there's two conditions here that really make it. One of those is, let me, let me use a different color. I'm going to go up here. One condition is if car B is not in car count, and two, if um, car count at uh, at um, B's car, B car, I'm going to call it, uh, which is this guy. Sorry for the confusion on the naming. Uh, if car count for this character B um, is less than or equal to zero. Uh, frankly, it's, it's probably, you know, that's if we reach this point, right? Um, so if it's one, you know, in the first time we run, run across a character, say the character is D, D was only one in the car count, right? So the first time we do that, it's like, okay, it's going to equal zero now. So uh, car count at D is going to equal zero. If we, if, so the next time, if we have a second D, well, there's no more remaining D. So we want to, we want to piece out real quick. Um, so if, if, uh, let's go back here. If, uh, let me change my pen back to black. If care count at car, sorry. If not care count at car or, so either one of these could be true. We'd want to piece out. Uh, if care count car, less than equal to zero. It's probably just gonna reach zero, but whatever. You could, you could totally do triple equals zero here. It, it doesn't matter. Um, then return false. You're not a permutation, buddy. Um, otherwise, otherwise that means we either, uh, that means for one that the character count is in there and that the character count is greater than zero for this character. So we're, we're good to go. We just want to decrement now. Okay, so that means character count het equals, and this is where we get that annoying thing again, care count character minus one, right? So that's how we decrement. Uh, if we make it all the way through this, Let's say that's for the for loop. We can return true. We can return true because it, it's true. It, at this point, it is absolutely the case. Then we are good to go. So that is everything. That is check permutation. What did we do? So if you're not used to hash maps, this is a really great way to get used to them. You see, they're a phenomenal way of accessing things. Um, it may look like I really cleared this one pretty quickly. But the truth is I've been doing this a lot. And this first chapter is like a warm up chapter for me at this point. But the first time I did it, this was absolutely Greek to me. I could not figure it out. I had to go find the um, answer in the back of the book. I had to copy it down. I had to figure it out. You might have to do that right now as well. And it's worth the effort to do that. Don't just move on to the next one. If this was a struggle for you, rewrite it. And you may have to come back four or five times. It's totally okay. Uh, now I am going to take like a five minute break. We are at the 9.35 mark. I am going to start back again at 9.40 a.m. CST. So whatever time it is for you, uh, if you're watching the recorded video, I'm just gonna edit this out maybe. So um, there's that, but I will be uh, right back in, uh, in five minutes. See you soon.
All right, I'm back. Tell me in the audience. Uh, I mean, there's just two of you. How y'all doing? You holding in there? Yeah, doing great. Awesome. Are these questions too easy or is it kind of like good to go over this? Uh, I, I'm probably pretty familiar with these, but it's still uh, fun watching you work through it. Yeah. Um, Cool. I think that is very useful just to see someone else actually solve the problem. So yeah, yeah, fair enough. Uh, they get much harder in the later chapters, but these are also the easier questions in this one. So uh, we'll keep going at it. Um, feel free to drop in or out though, um, if it gets too easy. But yeah, you know, if you're getting something out of it, definitely stick around. All right. Let me let me connect my iPad again. I don't know, why is it not, I'm not able to do that, hang on. There we go. Okay, and we are back. And uh, let's do a new page for a new problem. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna use, uh, I might use OneNote instead. You can kind of scroll down, let me. I'm going to do a new thing, interview prep, run out of page. This is, I'm not going to name the page. Okay. I could scroll down with this in case I run out of space. Um, all right, cool. So let's uh, go over, let's see, there's URLify. That's a pretty fun one, but I, uh, yeah, let's do URLify. That's 1.3. This will be really quick, <laughs> I think. Um, okay, so this one is write a method to replace all spaces in a string with percent 20. You may assume that the string has sufficient space at the end to hold the additional characters and that you are given the true length of the string. So this is basically why it's called URLify because you've probably seen this in a URL. Imagine you had uh, HTTP whatever.com slash uh, my percent 20 name percent 20 is George. I, I don't know, whatever. Um, and so you're like, well, what is this percent 20 business? It's just some standard they decided upon back in the day for URLs and a space is percent 20. There's other percent things out there. I don't really care uh, to go through them, but this is kind of the gist of it. So if I had a string that was my space name, and then let's say there's a ton of spaces is George, we would want to turn that into this. You notice that we have lost uh, some information here. We don't have how many spaces this is. Interesting, right? So that's that's where this gets to be a little more interesting. Maybe, maybe not. Um, so how are we going to solve this in JavaScript? Well, in Java, it has a particular way that you would have to do it. You have to use a character array, which is pretty interesting. I think one way we could do this is to um, just kind of iterate through this thing. If you see a space, you know, do add in a percent 20. If there's other spaces after that, ignore them and then just continue with adding the rest of the string in, right? So that could be a simple loop. So let's take function URLify. Oh, I did this in the exact opposite way I did it. Um, string, whatever. And uh, basically I'm gonna do just that. So let's just loop through. Um, for uh, let's let's make sure we get our variables down. Excuse me. So const URL string uh, equals nothing, uh, and then we'll do a nice little for loop. So far, let i equals zero. I is less than string dot length. I plus plus. So why am I doing a, a, an old school for loop here? Well, I, I wanna play with the index here for those spaces. I'm gonna do my own plus plus uh, until I, in case we come across a, a chance where there's like five spaces, right? So um, that's the big case, right? So let's start with that. Let's say if, uh, let's do uh, const char. Oh, no, 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 we wanna let this one for sure because we might change it like car equal string at, at i. Cool. So if car equals space, 
we need to do something about that. Um, we need to, uh, we need, the first time we do that, we need to add a percent 20, right? So we have our URL string um, and we could say something like uh, URL string, uh, equals URL string plus percent 20, right? There's many ways to do string concatenation in JavaScript. Uh, I'm just gonna do it this way. So um, this is one way of doing it. Now, this is just a really simple case though, because well, what if you know, we're looping through this and uh, we hit one of the uh, many spaces that there are in there. Um, so we're gonna do a little peek. We're going to peek ahead, and I'm going to do this with a with a little while loop. So while while um, string at i plus one equals space i plus plus. What does that do? That says um, that for one, that's going to increment i for us it's going to say okay if the next uh character in the list is also a space we're gonna we're gonna blast past that we're, we're just going to increment i um and then uh let's say it hits let's say it hits so it's doing space 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 now we hit a b um does b equal space no no so we're not going to increment i and we're going to let the for loop increment that for us right it'll stop so that's really convenient there. Uh, let's keep going. So that'll handle our spaces. Um, else, uh, URL string equals URL string plus car. Right, nice, cool, easy. We actually not, we didn't end up changing car. That's fine. Uh, we can put that back to a const. So, uh, I'm pretty confident this is really all there is to it. You're just looping through the whole thing. We're adding the character to the string one at a time. If we run into a space, we add that percent 20 immediately. And then if there are more spaces, then we just increment I until our problems go away. And then it's gonna loop again. And we're gonna have a new character. And if the character is not a space, then we're gonna add it to the URL string. So what do we do at the end of that? We just return URL string. Real easy. Um, cool, cool. That was that was a very quick one. I hope you uh, I hope you're getting stuff out of this easy out of these easier ones. Um, those are kind of fun to do. They're nice little warm ups. Um, okay. And if that was hard for you, don't worry. Don't worry at all. Uh, one point four. We're going to do palindrome permutation. This is where it finally gets a little more tricky. I think I remember this one being one of the trickiest ones when I. First start, well, not the, uh, the rest of the book was tricky too, but this one, I was like, what? How do I even? Um, so this one, 1. 1.4 in the book, given a string, write a function to check if it is a permutation of a palindrome. A palindrome is a word or phrase that is the same forward as backwards. For example, race car. Cool. Um, so, a permutation is a rearrangement of the letters. The palindrome does not need to be limited to just dictionary words. Wait a minute. So we want a permutation of a palindrome. So not only is race car okay, but so would the R-A-E-C-C-A-R, which is not a word, but this is a permutation of race car. So this is, uh, this would, we would say, yeah, true. It truly is. What the heck, right? I can easily come up with something to find a uh, palindrome. You know, it's just like, okay, is the letter here and here the same? Is the letter here and here the same? Letter here and here the same? Is this letter the same? Uh, and I'd be like, sweet, yeah, that we've done it. But now we're saying like, oh, okay, now we do that. And then we're like, um, these aren't the same letter, E and C. So uh, is it a palindrome permutation? Um, now I know the trick here. Uh, it's, it's a really straightforward one, but I, I really want you to pause here and try to think of it on your own if you can. There are certain properties of a palindrome that make this detectable, right? Without 
realizing first that it is a palindrome, right? What is that thing? Pause here or you know, do whatever you want. Try to figure it out on your own. I'm just going to go ahead and dive in right now and give the answer because this one is, um, these are, yeah, like I said, yeah, these are kind of warm ups. Um, so, what is the thing? Well, let's take a look at race car without, the, uh, without all the other stuff going on around it. Oh, deleted the E. This is also why I like OneNote better. The erase function is just better. Um, so here, obviously, we're like, okay, one, 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 one to one. But here's another thing about it. There are two R's. There are two A's, two C's, one E. Whoa. We just kind of normalized race car. So if we found a string that was two R's, two A's, two C's, one E, this is a permutation of race car, right? Interesting, interesting. Now, let's say we don't know the original word. It could be some unknown. In fact, it doesn't even have to be a word. A, A, B, B, C, C. That's also a palindrome, right? No, 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 wait. Actually, yeah, is this a, yeah, this could totally be a palindrome. You could do something like A, B, uh, C, C, B, A, right? That's a trick right there, isn't it? Um, so what, what am I getting at? Well, there's two cases where we know it could have been a palindrome if it was arranged properly. And that's if it has either two of every letter or two of every letter and then just one of one letter, right? So race car, it also could have had, let's say we had, uh, we added an E in here somewhere. It would be ridiculous if we did that, but it would still be a palindrome. In that case, uh, we have the one E here. And uh, that, so that's two cases where you can do it. It's either all even or uh, there's one odd thing in there and that's it. So how do, we, uh, how do we turn that into an algorithm? Now, you might be thinking back to our character count hash map because uh, we just did that and I'm also thinking about it. And I think that's what I wanna go with here. Um, I want to build up a character count. And if there are any, and then at the very end, I think what I want to do, so we have, let's do one for race car. The R to A to A C to E1. And then at the end, I can count them all up and be like, yeah, palindrome, because there's only one odd, and then there's the rest are evens, right? Um, that's interesting. So I could, I could start with that and then loop at the very end over it. So that would be, um, you know, that would be just fine because even though you're doing it twice, it's still O of N and you're going to have to do O of N anyway. So if you do two times O of N, it's still O of N, right? They, they don't care that it's O of, um, you could also do it like this O of two N, right? It, it doesn't matter, right? It's, it's still O of N essentially. Now, if you wanted to optimize it, you could probably find a way. Um, you could probably do it in one loop. There, there might be a way, but we're gonna do it in two loops here. Um, so how do we wanna do that? Well, let's do function is pal perm. I'm not gonna write this out. <laughs> um, string str, we're, gonna, we're even gonna abbreviate the word string here. We're getting lazy. Frankly, this is why I take five minute breaks is because <laughs> my mind just starts to melt. But anyways, is palindrome permutation, you take a string. So let's build up character count. So we have a const character count equals this hash map. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just loop through string with a for each string dot for each char. Um, and we are going to say uh, the same thing we did earlier. If not character count at car, then character count car equals one. Else, oh, I hate writing this. I should have just. <laughs> shared a function. Um, this equals character count 
at car plus one. There we go. And that's going to build up our character count string, right? There we go. Um, and that'll, that'll close out the for loop. Then we want to check if the character count makes sense. How are we going to do that? Well, the, our, our big heuristic here is, and I want to, oh, I can't just I change colors up here. Our big heuristic here is um, if all even or only one odd. These are the two things to keep track of. And how am I going to keep track of those? Um, let's say that if, let's just say that, let's just keep track of this, only one odd. Why not? Because if there's only one odd, then the rest are even, right? Um, so if we detect more than one odd, then it's not a, perm it's not a palindrome permutation. That's, that's super easy. Um, so let's do that, right? So I'm going to do, I'm going to loop through character count. So in JavaScript, how do we, how do we loop through objects? This is one of those things where it's like, it's a really good idea to, um, <laughs> uh, to Google things. So I'm going to Google that right now. I am going to go to um, iterate through object JS. And I think I'm looking for something like entries. Uh, let's see. I am at the MDN docs. Sorry, I'm not sharing my screen here for entries. Entries gives you a key and value. Uh, that's really cool. So you could do something like, um, this is what entries for, oops, for const key value of object dot entries. This is your first time seeing object dot entries, Google it. Uh, there's, there's some, this is one of the other parts of doing algorithms. You learn really nice little tidbits about uh, JavaScript that maybe you wouldn't normally come across. Object dot entries, um, character count. Right. Okay, so now we have this for loop where we have access to the key and the value. Now we don't care about the key actually. The key isn't like, are there two R's? Are there a, a you know, the, the, the thing here is we just want to know is that, is there more than one odd value, right? Very interesting. So um, how do we determine if something is odd? Uh, this is where uh, I think we can make really good use of the modulo operator. So we're going to operate off value. And one cool thing is if you're not going to use say if you got to destructure something from an array like this and uh, take a look at this take a look, let's actually go over this for a second look at this const destructured off of object.entries what is going on here object.entries uh, might be like there there's sort of this array thing going on and you're kind of destructuring the key value off of it um, take a go google that do javascript.info or something for that because this is a really nice, um, yeah, this is a really nice syntactical feature in JavaScript, right? And it looks so cool. Look at that. Doesn't this look like you should hire me right now? Hire me right now, people. Okay. Anyway, so um, let's dive in. So what do we want? We want the modular operator. So let's have a bool called um, uh, has no or one odd, uh, and that's going to equal true for now. Um, so if, so here's how you determine if something is even, value modulo two equals zero. What is modulo? That is get the remainder of. So if you remember in division when we were in elementary school, it's like, and it's like, uh, nine divided by two remainder of one, you know, is like, so like nine divided by two equals uh, like, what, what is that? Four with a remainder of one, right? So four times two is eight plus one equals nine. The remainder is what's left in the division. They thought this was super valuable and comp size, so they made it its own operator. And that operator is the modulo. This will return the remaining value. 
in a division sequence. So value, this is basically saying value divided by two, and then it's gonna return the remainder. So if value is four, two is always going to, it's gonna be, it's gonna equal zero because it's even. So you know something is even if it's division by two is zero. And you know it's odd if it's not equal to zero, right? That's all there is to it. That's how you can determine if something is odd or not. Really cool, really cool stuff. And it's very useful. So we're saying, hey, if this equals even, but we don't want that, do we? We want, hey, if this equals odd, we want to say if this does not equal zero, then we have an odd number, right? Very nice. So then, um, <laughs> then let's take a look at our Boolean, which now I'm kind of regretting. Has no or one odd equals true. Uh, let's, let's change this to has odd. And we're actually going to start that as false. It's totally fine to go back and be like, hey, interviewer, I did something stupid. Let's call this has odd instead. And you kind of correct yourself and it works really well. Uh, you can do that in an interview. It's totally fine. So we have this Boolean has odd. We have this statement that finds if it's odd. And I'm going to now say has odd equals true. Cool. So what is what did we want to do now? Well, I, I want to throw some space down here. There's this wonderful function in OneNote where I can just do this. Look at how cool that is. Boom. I added some space, just like a text editor. Um, I kind of want to say if, you know, we're, we're going to do this check twice, actually. We're going to say, we're going to have something where, let's do is odd. And that's going to equal this value modulo two, it's not equal zero. That's gonna be either true or false, T or F, right? And that way we don't have to keep, um, we don't have to keep repeating ourselves when we do it. So we can say down here, uh, if is odd and like, whoa, Jay, you did a lot on me right there. You deleted your other stuff. You added this other thing and not has odd. Uh, what are we going to do? We're going to say has odd equals true. Uh-oh, then what else? If is odd and has odd, we're going to return false. We're going to return false right there. And that's going to kill the end. That's going to return false for the whole thing. If we made it through this whole thing, then we never hit false. It's, we're just going to return true. Interesting. Very cool. There's multiple ways of doing this. And I said, hey, let's just check, you know, if the character is odd and we haven't flipped that has odd flag to true, let's flip it to true. Now, if it is odd and we have flipped that has odd to true, we, we don't have a permutation here. We're going to return false. So this is how I would approach is the palindrome a permutation. Really cool. Kind of the trickier one, isn't it? Uh, not only do you have to get the trick, quote unquote, to this, but you also have to figure out how to do it algorithmically. And if you struggle with this one, just practice it a few times, right? Sometimes the fourth time around is better. Whew. Boy, we're going through a lot. It ain't even 11 yet. We got an hour. And I'm still chugging away. I think we might be able to accomplish this whole chapter today. That would be insane. This, this whole chapter question used to take me hours on it. I'm, I'm telling you. Okay, we're going to do 1.5 now. That one is called one away. All right. Whew. Okay, page 91, if you're just joining. Good to see you, David. Um, all right, so one away. There are three types of edits that can be performed on strings. Insert a character, remove a character, or replace a character. Given two strings, write a function to check if they are one edit or zero edits away. Oh my God. You know, I've done four questions. I'm a little exhausted. My coffee's run dry. Now we are, <laughs> now it is time to do this question. Yay. Um, okay, three types of edits that can be performed on a string insert, remove, or replace. Interesting. And they give me these examples. 
And this is where you want to start in something where you're <laughs> kind of scared. I'm a little scared right now. I'm like, oh boy, am I going to be able to do this? Start with the examples. Lead with the examples. And, you know, every interview is a conversation with your uh, interviewee. No, interviewer, sorry, is a conversation with them. Be like, hey, are, so are these examples good? They might give you some. Come up with some yourself. Come up with some yourself, right? Be like, okay, I'm coming up with these examples. So is this example true or false? Now, this one, these are from the books. Let's, let's come up with an example of our own. All right, so let's take a look at these. Pale, P-L-E. What's the difference? You removed one, A, cool. Pale's pale. You added this S, that's, that's true. Pale, bake, that's true. Why is that true? Oh, pale and bail, that's not a K. <laughs> that's my handwriting, good Lord. Um, pale and bail, that's one letter off, it's the P and the B. Pale and bake, that's two letters off, so that's false. Um, interesting, two letters off is false, huh? Um, one letter off is true. Feels like an insight. That feels like an insight. Um, let's just pretend I came up with these examples, but come up with some on your own. You know, maybe be like red and bed. True. Uh, red and bread. False. Super false. Uh, and that's because there's just so many more letters here. Interesting. Interesting. I'm thinking of a hack and it's not going to work, but let, let's think because it's going to give us some insight. Let's say the length of string, uh, let's compare it. So let's say we have string A, string B, A dot length minus B dot length. Now let's get the absolute value math dot abs. Oh my God, Jay, what's, what's math dot abs? Where did you just pull that from the ether? Google it. Uh, this gives you the absolute value. So when you subtract something, um, it's going to give you a non-negative number. If it's negative one, you're going to get a one, right? Welcome back to math. Um, okay. So math dot abs, if math dot abs, uh, a dot length minus B dot length, uh, what do I want of that is greater than one, then uh, return false. Oh my God, there's two edits there, right? That's why, because that is entirely a thing with red. Oh, hang on. I can't say for sure that this is updating in Zoom. I'm gonna reshare my screen one second. Stop share. Sometimes my iPad will freeze up. Let me reconnect. There we go, there we go, there we go. All right, I added this in there. Sorry if that wasn't updating on Zoom. I'm actually gonna be switching to Twitch or something to stream this later, so maybe that'll work better. Um, okay, if math.absolute value of a.length minus b.length is greater than one, in that case, there's more than one edit you have to make. Return false, get out of here, right? That fixes red dot bread, or red versus bread, but it doesn't fix Pale and bake because they're the same length, right? So that doesn't get it. So we need to do something more, but we're coming on to something here. Uh, we, we may have to compare the letters at some point. Um, and I think, you know what? I think we're actually getting to that point. I think we have to do another character count here. Oh, let's, let's try that. Um, let's kind of whiteboard it. P1, A1, B1. Wait, is that? No, L, sorry. L1, sorry, this is an L. This is how I write ones and oh, I'm so sorry, this is an L. Um, e1, there, I'm just gonna write ones like this so you don't get confused for the rest of this. Um, okay, so we have pale, we're like, okay, we have pale. Now what about uh, bail? We have uh, B1, we have A1, we have L1, we have E1. One, cool. And these are supposed to line up and you can see how. Um, we have A lines up here, L lines up here, E lines up here. There's only one difference, right? Interesting. So how would I determine there is just one difference? 
Um, I have some ideas. I have some ideas. Uh, that idea is, hey, let's delete the A when it goes down to zero. Say we do the decrement thing from earlier. We decrement these numbers and we bring it down to zero. If it reaches zero, delete it. It goes bye-bye, right? Boom. Uh, and let's do the same. Okay, the L's line up. Let's delete those. The E's line up. Let's delete those. The P and the B don't line up. But what do we have? We have, uh, well, we have two objects here. Let's say we delete them on both sides. I'm not sure you can get away with one hash map here yet. Let's say you just have one here and one there. Well, what does that tell me? That tells me that there is only one difference between the two maps, uh, at, between the two objects here. The length of each object um, is equal to one. You can almost run it through this guy where you did the absolute difference between the two's length. Uh, this is going to equal zero. Um, so a dot length minus b dot length here is going to equal zero. And that's great, you know? Now, let's say, however, you had a C1 here, then that would mean the length is, uh, is too much, but the length is going to equal, the, the difference between the two is going to equal one. So I think maybe I need to do a greater than equals here, right? But we have another problem. What is that? What, well, what if B had two, there were two Bs? Uh, then we're in a pickle, right? Uh, and now I'm like, oh, okay. Now I have to not just check the length, but check if uh, the number of letters differs that much. Oh, I don't like it as much now uh, because now I'm gonna have to do extra checks. I kind of have an idea for something else. What if, and I'm just spitballing here. Uh, and so in the interview, I would do just this because, hey, I don't know the answer right now. This is almost perfect. Every other one, I, I just knew off the top of my head. This one, I totally don't. What if I had two arrays instead, right? So we do pale, we add P, A, L, E. Well, here's, here's a problem with that. Well, we need to line up the letters. So, oh, not a good idea, not a good idea. But it would be nice because then if there were like two P's, you would have like, uh, you, would, you would have something where you could have P here and, Maybe you would know based off the length alone that, hey, there's too many different edits here, but you got to know that they match first. So can't do that. Nice. Uh, cool. And so if I did that in an interview and I was like, oh, I discovered something. Oh, wait, it doesn't work. They're going to be like, okay, this guy tries to evaluate trade-offs. And you really want to do that in an interview. You want to say, hey, what about this other approach? And you evaluate it really quickly and you're like, nah, not good. Uh, then you, you've done good. You did good there. Uh, that's, they like that. They like that you're thinking. They don't like that you're just regurgitating. Um, so keep it up. All right, so back to here. Okay, oh, P is one, B is two. I guess it's not so bad to compare the counts, is it? Uh, it definitely doesn't take much. Uh, it's an O of one access to a hash map. So we're not doing anything computationally expensive here. It's just kind of annoying to add the code for that. So you don't get a free lunch. It looks like we might even have to have two hash maps. Um, that's okay. That kind of adds to the space. So now the space is different now. Let's, let's, let's talk about space complexity here. We have O of N, which is A. We have O of M, which is B. Oh my God, what am I talking about here? Um, why did I add that in? Why isn't it just two O of N? Well, you have two different strings. So you need to represent that when you're doing your big O calc when you're doing your big O estimations here. And so this is actually going, the space complexity, it's going to be O of N plus O of M. N being A, M being B. Oh my goodness. So why, why? Because, well, B might be a totally different length. Let's say this is in the thousands of characters. B is 10,000, A is just 9,000, right? You're like, Jay, that's insane. I'm like, no, this is kind of how they want you to think though. Um, so in that case, you're going through 1000 M and what did I say? 800 N? I, I said something totally different, but I already forgot. So there's like 800 here plus 1000 here, right? So uh, that is a different number. You, you want to make sure you keep track of that. So that's why you say O of N plus M here for the space complexity. Uh, now, obviously, the, uh, the big O notation for this is probably going to be like, and I didn't do big O for the other ones, totally sorry. 
I should have, but you know, they're probably all O of N or O of two and something simple like that. This is gonna be something along the lines of O of N plus N for the runtime complexity, for the, uh, yeah, for the time complexity here. And why is that? That's because I'm gonna loop through A, and I'm gonna loop through B. And you gotta, you gotta keep track of that, right? Um, you, you gotta say, hey, yeah, well, we're, we're iterating through both of these things. And we might actually do it twice. 2n plus 2m. Now they don't care that you do it twice. They, they don't care you have to do it twice. It's a it's an estimation. It's not a oh lord. It's an estimation. It's not like uh, they, I'll just leave it at that. It's an estimation. Right? They don't care if you have to multiply n or m. Uh, they only care if you have to do something like n squared, right? Then you want to keep track of it or log n, right? Then you want to keep track of it. But this is just linear time. Linear time times two is still linear time. That's all we're saying here. So uh, brush up on that. And that's enough of a detour there. So now that we kind of have this idea, we've kind of worked through our edge cases a little bit. We have an idea that you know we're gonna have to build a hash map of A, build a hash map of B. We can come up with a really nice shorthand way of getting out of there. But at the end of the day, we're gonna have to compare letters and letter counts. So we're gonna have to build up character counts. Right, and uh, that's that's fun. So let me add some space here. Let me erase this. God, erasing is so nice in OneNote. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so we want to build up these two character counts. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my function. Function um, is one away, because it's a Boolean. I'm gonna do strings A and B, cool. And uh, what we're going to do here, oh, is it, hey, 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 Randall or Dave, can you tell me if this is uh, still updating on the Zoom call? It's not updating on my end. Yeah, it's still updating. Okay, so you see that function is one away? Uh, maybe not, no. No, okay, it's, know. okay, cool. Something messed up then. Let me, I'm going to reshare it. <laughs> like, how would you tell if something was wrong when uh, it's, you know, <laughs> when it's going to look right, no matter what? Um, okay, let me go to screen. There we go. Function is one away. There it is. Um, cool. So function is one away. What I want to do is build up the character counts. And if the differences are more than one, then we'll, we'll figure something out. We can kind of do that along the way. So let's, let's get a const a care account, const b care count. Oh my God, we're gonna have to do this again for both of them. What? Both of them. Let's, uh, let's have this, and you can do this in an interview too. Like I, I'm so sick of, doing things twice, since we had to do it twice, let's have a build care count. It's gonna take a string, right? And we're gonna do uh, <laughs> care count was this. Yeah, you can totally break off a function if you think it's fine to do so. And it is fine to do so here. We're repeating ourselves and it's annoying. Um, character count equals that. Um, Let's do string dot for each. Oh my God, we're doing this again. You're gonna know so much about building hash maps at the end of practicing this that it's not even gonna be funny. Um, okay, so if not car count, car, oh, then car count, car equals one else care count car equals care yeah care count car plus one and then return character count oh can you imagine if i did that twice inside is one away it would be a nightmare so instead we get to do this beautiful thing right here Build care count A, build care count B. Whew. 
Very, very beautiful. Now we get all of that for free. Okay, now we need to compare things, right? So we said that if there was um, a certain thing, we can we can dip out early, right? And I want I definitely want to pull that in here. If the absolute value of the difference between a care count dot length. Do do objects have length properties? Let me. I'm going to actually. Let me see real quick. I'm pretty sure they do. Uh, I'm, I am pulling up a Chrome DevTools and I'm going to see if I can just have a length property. No, it's undefined. Oh goodness. Um, object, how can I get length of, get number of object keys, JS. I wonder if I've been doing that just this whole time. Um, let's see, there should be object.keys, object.length. I think there is a, a much quicker way. There's a size if you're using underscore. Um, this is a very, this is a very uh, map to read instead of size. Ooh, nice. Um, let's see, we can do, okay. Object.keys, object.length. This is kind of expensive. Let me see if I can't find um, something, a better object thing. And I'm, I'm Googling around right now. Uh, and this is something I do all the time when I'm studying. I'm like, oh, I kind of get. And so this is very useful for me. It's going to be really useful for you to do as well. Okay. Object.keys. Yeah, that's, that's going to be it. So we're going to get, and I'm going to do this as a variable. So const a car length equals object dot keys uh, a car count dot length. This says, what are the number of keys in this thing? Now we know that this isn't a foolproof method, but it is a good, uh, it is still useful, right? Keys. Now you might say one of the trade-offs here is that object.keys is going to loop through the entire object and that might not be worth it, right? So you're already looping through the object here. And so maybe it isn't worth it, but uh, you can ask your interviewer like, hey, I don't think that's worth it. Uh, and they could be either like, yeah, sure, that doesn't sound worth it. Or like, hey, whatever. Uh, and you can come back to that later or something. But I'm just going to do it here. Map.abs a car length minus b car length. Right? It's greater than zero. If the differences are greater than zero, there's one key difference. Uh, no, because look. Or, or, is, or do we want it to be greater than one? So if the difference was uh, B2, or let's say it was P1, then uh, they both had, or sorry, let's say there was two remaining Ps. I'm back up here. Uh, if there were just these two differences, these would be the only thing. And so the difference, the length of these keys is going to equal to zero. Uh, if you had this, but you also had A1, you'd be like, oh my God, there's, there's too many differences here. Right, so let's say uh, P was two and A was one, like there's way too many differences. So this would come up to equal one from, from math.abs over here. So we, we, yeah, I think greater than zero is fine here. We can ret false, return false, cool. Otherwise we need to go through the whole song and dance of comparing these two objects. Oh, so how do we wanna do that? Um, well, we, we had two operations we wanted to do. We wanted to delete from each object if it reached zero. Okay, so we're gonna loop through and uh, let's, yeah, yeah, well, let's actually, let's loop through, um, let's loop through A. So let's do that first. Um, we can say four, oops, that's really big for const, look at this, a key 
a val of object dot entries. Oh, okay, hang on. This needs some space. No, 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 no. Never mind. Um, I am going to lasso select this. How about that? There we go. I'm going to move it to the side. <laughs> Way awesome. Okay, I, object dot entries a care count. This is because we are just going through the A character count first. And then we want to, if it matches something in the B, well, you know, we already did this length check, right? So we're, we're fine. We can, we can go through this while, while just looping through one of them, right? So let's see here. So we have A key, A val from A character count. We're able to access keys in B with this and values with this, right? So that's really interesting. And you can edit the object along the way. It's going to be fine, I think. I kind of want to test it. So I might go back to my real code editor after this and test it. And I recommend you doing that anyways. You'll notice I haven't done that at all for any of these, but go ahead and do them. Um, so we have a key and a val of this a character count object, which is going to look like a one, b two, uh, so on and so forth, right? And so what we want to do, we want to do two things. And I'm going to uh, do a comment here. And uh, you can do that in your code editor. That's why I'm kind of trying to make it as JavaScripty as possible. But note that this is definitely still pseudo code to me. But yeah, I, you know, um, even though it's mostly not pseudo code. Um, okay, so you have a key, a val. What do I want to do? Decrement um, b car count at a key by. by a val. Oh my goodness. Um, if result is less than zero, return false. Why is that? Um, if you, if, okay, this is, let's just make it really quick. A, no, 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 no. let's say a, yeah, yeah okay, yeah. a is three, whatever. B is, um, let's say B is one over here. All right. So we're comparing, let's start with this, A and uh, A1 and A3, right? So we subtract A val from this A3 over here. And what was that going to give us? Well, that's going to give us two. Or, or rather, it's going to give us negative, negative two. We don't want that. That's too many. Uh, so we want to we want to get out of here. We want to we want to get the hell out of here. Um, it's it's too many differences. So uh, we're going to return false there, right? Return false there. What else? B two, B one. What does that equal? Two minus one. That equals one. That's just one difference. That's fine, right? But I think we can only have one of those, right? Interesting. So uh, it failed here because that was negative two. But this is passable if it's the only time we ever do it, right? So we're seeing some stuff here. So, uh, OK, uh, we have subtract B character count at A key by the A value. And uh, if the result is 0, we're good, right? That's kind of what we're looking for. We want to say it has the same number of Bs in each hash map. That sounds good. Uh, if there is a difference and that difference is just one. Maybe we can do math.absolute value there. If that difference is just one, then uh, we need to mark that we already have our one insert, right? Or one delete or one whatever the hell, right? It actually doesn't matter, does it? Um, because there's just one remaining there. And if it's greater than one or the flag has been hit, uh, then you don't want to, you won't want to go on anymore, right? So let's do that. So, I, there, and there's actually one other thing where it's like, and we'll get to it later, but if there's like two different, two different characters or, or like this one has A, B, let's say this one had the letter F and this one didn't. And we had F1 right here. 
then and these all matched up. Right, then this would this would be allowed because it's the only difference. And these never differed, right? So that's another case we want to go at. And I think the thing there is that um, the difference between these two is actually going to be one. So you know what? I actually don't like this because this earlier one, this difference is greater than zero. And if I'm deleting all these keys, well, then all that's left is zero here and one here. And so this is wrong. I'm glad I found that out. In fact, I don't think I even like this thing anymore. I don't want it. <laughs> it's a little too crude. It's a little too crude. And uh, frankly, doing the character length count is just kind of ridiculous. So let's, let's get rid of it. Because we're constructing them anyways. And, um, and we're going to figure something out uh, in this loop. Because this loop here is, is perfect. So maybe I would have been docked uh, for adding that in so haphazardly during an interview. Uh, maybe I would uh, redeem myself by removing that in the middle of an interview. How do I know which will happen? Cross your fingers, bud, and <laughs> wear a smile, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> the more they like you, the more they will, they will forgive you. Uh, that's the unfortunate truth. So, um, all right. So, or just be perfect. You know, that helps too. Um, but I'm not perfect. So anyways, coming back to here, we can uh, do these comparisons. So let's, we had a flag, didn't we? We had a flag where we're like, uh, let has difference, difference equals false. Because looking back at the question, the question says, there are three types of edits given two strings, write a check if they are one or zero edits away, right? So an edit is basically a difference between the string. And so we're going to say has difference. We could say has edit, but you know, whatever. Um, so let has difference equals false. And uh, what we're going to do here then is just go through it. We're going to say, okay, if um, let's say, let's start with B car count, kind of like we did in our comments. And I, I like that I had the um, comments is where I did the thinking because now I'm blanking, right? So, that's interesting. The comments did the thinking because now I'm blanking. Um, that's uh, that's why you know writing things down is so useful, like this comment, because you, maybe you'll forget um, because you, your brain is just fried like mine. Uh, if B character counted a key, uh, what is we want to subtract? We might not even want the difference minus a val. Um, and we wanted to actually, we wanted to map that absolute value on this, didn't we? Let's move this over. Let's move over here. If math.abs, absolute value of this, right? Um, uh, what, what do we want? We have a few cases here. If the difference is greater than, um, if it's greater than one, we want to return false. That's the first one. The second one is sort of like, um, if, can I just copy that? Please tell me I can copy that. <laughs> now, if you're copying things, what does that mean? Well, that means that you probably need to, um, there we go. You probably need to put a, a variable somewhere out there. Um, okay. If it equals one, if it equals one, what does that mean? Well, we want to say has difference. It's true. What is that difference? Is it an edit? Is it an insert? Uh, who knows, but it is a difference. And so we have one and we can only have one. Um, now we do this again. If, oh my goodness, this is actually getting a little ridiculous. So I kind of want to get, I, I definitely want to make a variable now because it's just getting a little ridiculous. So uh, const 
diff count, look at that, equals math.abs. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Cool. If, okay, no, equals math.absolute value dcar count a key minus a val. Whew. All right, that's the diff count. Now we can say if diff count is greater than one, return false. Let's do, let's do another lasso select. I, I love these things so much. Boom. Look at that, return false. Nice. If diff count equals one, has difference equals true. Oh, but we want a little more here, don't we? Um, we want to say if it equals one, and not has difference. Has difference equals true if diff count equals one and it already has a difference. Return false. Right. Uh, and that covers, what does that cover? That covers, um, that covers if it already had a difference, if it already had an edit, uh, then uh, return false. So basically there was one difference and it doesn't have, okay, return false. So we have that down. We have um, the diff count is greater than one down. What are the other things that we need to have down, right? And this is where your examples come in handy. I'm currently a little bit like bleh right now in my brain. And that'll happen during an interview. And you want to fall back on your examples. So I'm going to bring these examples down here. All right, first, let me delete something, actually. Let me delete that square. Okay. Let's come up with our examples here. And let's bring them down. Let's bring them down here. Okay. So which ones have we accomplished so far? I'm going to cross them out in red. Uh, so we have pale PLE. We have none of the trues yet. Uh, we have the falses. So this one, is this one false? Yeah, this one is false because it has more than one difference. So we got, we got that one. We also have, uh, what else do we have? We have pale and Bailey. Do we have that one down? Um, I think so. So that one, we, um, we have two E's. We have the P and the B differ. And then the E count, it already has the difference, right? So the diff count um, equals one. And uh, there's already a difference, so that's false. If the diff count was greater than one, we already returned false. So if it was like, um, um, oh, what would that be? Diff count. So there would be e one and e two over here. Now the absolute value is one, right? But that's okay sometimes, right? If this was pooly and or paley and pale. Uh, then we'd be all right. But, you know, since it is our first difference, we, we want to note that. So that's what we did here. But it already had the difference because the, oops, because the P and the B here were already different. And that would be picked up here. The diff count would equal one. It didn't have a difference yet. So the difference is true. So we're fine. Uh, we're fine. But then there's this E and E and we're like, oh no, it already has the difference. Let's return false. So that's covered as well. Right. So let, let's cover the true cases. I think could we, if we're fine with just the false one. So let's see. You've gone through this one to make it false. Um, and we have the has, I think this captures all the cases where there are any issues during the difference of it. But there's something else we wanted to do. We wanted to delete things if, um, if they zeroed out. And then we wanted to compare the length of the object to get to the point where we could say, 
there's too many differences here there, or is the perfect number of differences there. So what's that gonna look like? Let's say it dodges all of these things. The diff count is always zero up till now, right? What, what do we wanna do? Well, we wanna delete. So if diff count equals zero, uh, then we wanna delete from these. So let's delete. Um, hmm. I'm worried about this for of loop. And, you know, sometimes in the middle of an interview, let's say my worry is that if we delete this entry in the middle of the loop, it's going to screw things up. It's going to be weird about it. Um, so I don't know how to deal with that. And the interviewer might be like, oh, well, you should probably figure that out before the interview. Or he'll say, yeah, no, no, you can still do that. And I don't know what the answer is right now. And it's a good thing I'm practicing so I can figure that out, right? So, but I'm going to pretend that you can do this. I'm going to pretend that you can just say, um, delete a care count at a key. And that'll delete it from the object. And I also want to do that from the B care count. B key. And you know what? This is weighing on me. Did, is this possible? I'm going to Google that right now. Let's, let's check it out. Uh, can I delete from object during for of loop JS? Uh, let's see. Is it safe to delete an object property while deleting it? Um, properties may be deleted during enumeration. Awesome. Um, if a property that has not yet been visited during enumeration is deleted, then it will not be visited. If new projects or if new properties are added, the newly ones are not guaranteed to be visited, um, but it is uh, totally okay to do that. That's awesome. So as long as it's already visited the property and the object, uh, you can delete it and it's not gonna affect anything. Uh, that's really nice. So we do get to do this uh, thing right here, very cool. If any of what I just said was confusing to you, just Google it. Um, okay, delete a care, delete B count, uh, done, right? That's the end of that. And then that's gonna be the end of that for loop. I think we've done everything. Um, is, yeah, yeah, we, we've done everything that I want out of that for loop has been done. Now we are left with a, um, we are left with an a care count and a B care count that probably looks something like this. A and then B. Right. So they might just differ from like this, or it could be that uh, A has nothing in it. B has one thing in it. Um, or, yeah, yeah, oh no, no, no. No, because there's one last thing we forgot about. We forgot to check if, uh, actually, no, this will just be left over. This could still be, so we only went through all the A key things, right? And maybe we're left with a thing where A, and a had all of B, except, so, okay, so if we had pale as A, and then we had pale, Z, right? And this is the only difference. So it went through and it deleted P-A-L-E from A. And you're left with, just to make this clear, you're left with S having only one left, right? Now it could also have two left is the thing, right? So you can't just rely on the length right now. We need to do one last check. And that check is to see if, um, you know, if there is, uh, you know, if these numbers are too big, right? If there are two left in that, then we, we need to dip out uh, or, and that actually, that depends on if it has a difference or not. So we actually need to pull has difference out of that for loop. So we have access to it outside of the for loop. Interesting, because we need it. We need that thing. Let's, let's remove it from here. Okay, I was like const diff count. Okay, so now we have has difference that is affected by this for loop. And we have access to it already. So if we come to this situation, we could say, well, has it had a difference already? If so, S, this is fine, where there's only one uh, S 
Um, if there already was a difference, say it was bale and pails, then, you know, I guess that would be picked up sooner, but like it, it just, oh, would that be picked up sooner? Nah, I, I think that would have already been picked up. Yeah, so the only thing we're worried about is if S is equal to two here. Yeah, exactly. Because if there was another difference and then we had, oh, no, 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 that's fine. Bail and pale, it went through, and but there would be a, a B1 here. So we would actually be in this territory, right? And we still need to know if there was a difference. It would say bail instead of pale. So we'd have, we'd have it like this, B1, P1, and then there'd be S1, right? And um, that, that would say, that would be something that we could delete with the um, absolute value length comparison. Oh my God, my brain is absolutely dying right now. We got 15 more minutes of this and I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna do a Q&A after this because this is, this is 1.5. Oh, I've done all five. This is like a tremendous amount of brain work. Anyways, let's, let's finish it off. Let's see if we can finish it off. Um, okay, so we've gone through the whole thing and we're in either two situations. One, where we have this object here, in which case, um, yeah. Yeah, in which case we have this object here or we have this object here. And those are the two falses or we have S1, and this is true, right? True, let me do T, T, F, and F. So now that we've gone through it, we can have those possibilities and we need to figure our stuff out. So the first one, it's interesting. It's almost like, hey, or, or you know, we could also have S1 and then a blank object. So it could happen on either the A or the B side, right? And if, true if has diff equals false. Let's see, so what does that mean? What does that mean? That means, hmm, we can do a few things here. One, we can check if we have a difference already. And if there is anything remaining, then we say, get out of here. Right, so this does not return true if we already have a difference. Nice, let, let, let's do that catch all. Okay. If, oops. Let's, uh, let's actually get the land. If, um, actually, yeah, let's do const remain diff equals math. Dot abs. We're going to have to reuse this. Um, a care, I'm running out of space. A care count minus B care count. Actually, that's, uh, I'm sorry, we don't have those variables with us. Uh, we have to say um, A care count dot length minus B care count dot length. Cool, and we have to get the absolute value of that. Now, if has difference and remaining diff is greater than zero, return false, right? Cool, so that's gonna capture uh, if, if, it's going to capture basically all the has difference ones, but it's not going to capture uh, if it doesn't have a difference and this is still the case. And if it doesn't have a difference in either of these are the cases, this is false and this is true. If has diff is true, then this is still false and this is true, right? We need to, or I'm sorry, if has diff is not true, my bad, brain dying here. Uh, if has diff is not true, then this is false and this is true. So we need, we need to capture that somehow. And how are we gonna do that? Um, oof, what do we do? Um, let's say, so basically we wanna, in this case, uh, we know that either this object exists or this object exists, right? Or these two objects exist. That means there's one empty object and one full object. Uh, and there, there isn't gonna be this. If has diff is false, 
and we're looking at this guy, uh, this is probably too much because you have S is different and P that is different. So uh, we have has difference and the rom. So if, okay, so hmm, how do we want to say this? Uh, oh, and a character count dot length, that's a character count dot keys dot length, my bad. Um, so how do we want to say this? We want to say, okay, if the remaining difference, so this would be a difference of, um, this would be still, that's one minus two, that is one difference, uh, but there's actually two differences there, right? There's the P and the S. So actually, if any of them's length is greater than two, then we want to piece out. If, uh, so let's just do a dot care count dot keys. Oh, that's object.keys. I am so sorry. Uh, let's actually, let's capture that in a more intelligent way. So I was supposed to be delete. Whew. Okay, so const a len equals object.keys. A care count dot length. Cool. Const. B len equals da 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 da. Same thing for the B care count dot length. Now I'm really diving into that pseudocode. How nice. Okay, now we can come back here and say A len minus B len. That's the remaining difference. If it has differences and there is a remaining difference greater than zero, return false. Okay, so what's the other one? The other one is if um, a len plus b len is greater than um, is greater than one, return false. Maybe you could have stick, stuck that here, right? Uh, but whatever. So if a length is uh, one and b length is one. Uh, then we have two different characters. That's two different differences, and that's two edits. So we got to get rid of it. So bail versus pale. Oh no, bail versus pale is true. Oh God, what am I thinking? Oh no, guys, my brain is dying. Oh Lord, I have totally mixed that up. Um, okay, but we did this check. We did this has difference check. So for here, has difference is false. Um, or has difference is, yeah, yeah, it's false. Oh no, oh no. Um, is greater than, no, it's greater than uh, two. I think that'll solve it. That'll get this case, because this equals three, right? Um, so that's a problem. Now, if A, you have, if it has difference, we have A one, we have B one, we want to capture that. Oh my God, my brain is dying, y'all. We got seven more minutes. This is intense. Um, okay, so if uh, if either of these values is one or both of these are one, good Lord, then this would be an insertion and this would be an edit, right? That clears things up for me. <laughs> um, or even better, it could be a delete, insertion or deletion. Right, remove the S, they're the same now. Add the S, they're the same now. Um, edit, uh, this A is now a B, cool. So these two still check out. So we want to know that they check out. And we have, we're here with, they have a difference, or if they don't have a differences, uh, then, then we're here. So we know that we're okay if this happens, right? This is the only thing that could happen. What do we do now? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, I think we just compare um, the values of the remaining ones. For one, if, well, let, let's do one for each, right? So if a len, uh, how can we say this where it captures both? If a len plus b len, oops, sorry, equals one, return true. Woo. That saved us some math, right? So if there's only one difference, we're good. 
we're good. So if, yeah, yeah, so this totally works. Okay, and if um, a len, oh, no, 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 that's, that's totally false because this could totally be S2. We wouldn't know. Oh, Christ, 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 Christ. Um, my bad, this does not work. We're gonna to have to get uh, the remaining key value, right? So, oh goodness Christ. Okay, we have five minutes left. Let's see if we can knock this out. Um, Object.keys a care count. B equals the same thing, but for B character count. Um, if we, so that, that gives us the keys. Now, obviously we only want the first because we've already checked to see if it is anything greater than that. And I think that's fine. So if there isn't one, then this is undefined and that's okay. But this is gonna be if A lane equals B lane, then we could say something like, I don't know, if, um, a care count at A uh, equals one. If, oh, goodness Christ. Uh, actually, I think my brain has completely fried here. I am totally sorry, y'all. Um, basically, what I want to do is just make sure that these keys line up properly. And I just can't do it because I've been doing this for two hours and I am fried right now. Uh, we're going to stop right here. I'm going to open up the Q&A uh, for this one and uh, see how it went for everyone. And uh, we'll, we'll take it from there. So uh, Randall and David, I have you two on the line. Uh, how, how did that go watching that on the other end? Uh, I really enjoyed that. I took a lot away from that. Um, it was a lot of fun. So while you were trying to solve it, I was also doing it. Mm -hmm. And so I was like running into problems. Like sometimes you ran into a problem before I did. And then sometimes the opposite. Like, hey, you ran into the same thing I was running into. So that was, I really enjoyed that. Nice, so that nice. Great. Glad to hear it. Da David, how did you like it? Um, I haven't learned hash maps yet. So it's just interesting watching you kind of work it out. Nice, nice. Did you, did you learn something useful? Are you able to take something away from it after watching yeah, like you know, yeah. that's just the general process of breaking it down. Kind of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how, how was it following? Do you, this was a super challenging thing for me the first time I did it. Was it kind of hard to follow along or what do you think? A um, little, little bit. It gets a uh, little complex, but I think, I think it, it was okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, good, good. We'll try doing these on your own as well. Uh, you're definitely in two buckets. If you've done this before, you probably still got something out of it. Like just seeing me struggle. If you haven't done this before, you got a whole lot out of this. Um, be sure to do these problems again on your own. Uh, and they're super useful to go over. Uh, but I'm glad both of you got something out of this. That makes me think, yeah, this is worthwhile for everyone and not just me, which is really cool. Um, so, and this has been two hours of tech interview practice for me, which I need, uh, and it's still helpful for you all. So I'm going to stop the recording there.